Welcome to Meaning Over Money, a different kind of financial podcast where money is never about money. Welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are so excited to have you here. We hope you're having an awesome week. And regardless of when you're listening to this, we hope this episode adds value to your journey. Whenever I'm doing speaking engagements, one of my favorite parts is if I get the chance to do a Q&A on the back end. I love the Q&A because the Q&A, you never know where it's going to go. You never know where somebody wants to take the conversation, but I love that we get to meet people where they're at because I can say whatever I want in my talk, but people's lives are their lives. And so it's an opportunity for me to meet them right where they're at. And so it's, it's always a fun piece of the event for me. And recently, I was doing a talk, and I made a comment about how I don't believe in retirement. And in the Q&A, somebody asked the question that I absolutely love this question. They asked me, Travis, don't you ever want to actually enjoy your life? Now, that's a very pointed question. And I could see some of the audience members, they looked a little uncomfortable because they didn't know maybe where, where was this going to go? Was that an offensive question? And, and I don't, I didn't take it as an offensive question because I think it's a very relevant question with where most of us are at with work in our relationship with work. And so here's the truth though. I don't believe in retirement, but I, I love my life I'm enjoying my life more than ever, even though I'm working harder than ever. And if I, if I ever get to the point where my work becomes a negative, that means I need to change my work. I think it should add value to our lives. I don't think work should zap value from our life. I think work should add value to our life. And, and I would also add that enjoying life, quote unquote, enjoying life, that does not mean living a life of leisure. They aren't one and the same. Living a life of leisure is not the same as enjoying life. Doing leisurely things can be part of enjoying life, but that's not the definition of enjoying life. I do believe that we should get away. We should detach from our work. We should travel. We should adventure. We should spend time with the people we care about. I think that's valuable. So I want to show you what the typical work to retirement plan is. This is culturally the way that we view and handle retirement and work in in our culture today. The first thing we do is we find work that pays as much as we can find. So the more money we make, the better. And it doesn't matter whether we like our job or not. We're here for the money. We're not here to enjoy our work, right? That's the way we treat it. If we can make more money, we should go do that. And then along the way, we're going to hoard as much money as we can into our investments. We're going to save, 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 invest, invest, invest. Then we're going to reach a certain age in our journey in which we have enough assets saved and invested that we can stop work and that we can retire. Now, we treat it in our culture, our retirement age is a new version of a scorecard. 60 is better than 65, 55 is better than 60, and 50 is better than 55. And what we do is we treat it as though the sooner we get there, the better. We've won. That's the scorecard. That's the definition of success. Why? Because when we get there, we can stop working and start actually enjoying our life. And if you truly believe that retirement is the inflection point between working and actually enjoying our lives, yeah, I think the race is relevant to us. We should be racing if we really believe that, and that's what we believe as a society. And so this plan, I believe this plan incentivizes us to cut back on spending as much as possible. It incentivizes us to save and contribute as much as we can. Because the better we do at that, the quicker we get to get to retirement. And so here's what I believe. I believe that meaningful work is a release valve to so much misery, stress, pressure 
that comes with life. Think of it this way. If we believe that the finish line to get to retirement is the answer, we feel a lot of weight with that. Number one, we feel the time weight. Because again, if we're trying to retire at 50, 55, 60, if we have a number, we feel the weight of that that time gap between now and then. We feel that. But also, we feel the financial pressure because the only way to get there is to contribute more and more and more. So we feel that tension in us. And at the same time, we're often in jobs we dislike or hate. It's kind of like the Gallup study that we talk about often that 70% of Americans, 7 out of 10 of Americans, dislike or hate their job. And so if you're feeling the time pressure to get to the retirement age as, as quick as you can, and you feel the financial pressure to save and contribute even more to hurry up and get there, but all the while you're feeling the stress and the tension of a job that really zaps you and, and, and rips meaning and, and enjoyment right out of your life, that's a triple whammy. That's hard. And that's where a lot of people are. And so the alternative is this. If we believe work matters, if we believe that work should add value to our lives, we might not put so much pressure on ourselves to race to that finish line. So step one of the alternative path is pursue meaningful work. If we pursue meaningful work, even if it pays less, let's say it pays less. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. If we're pursuing meaningful work, we don't necessarily feel that time pressure because we're not racing to a finish line. I don't believe that we should have to wait to actually enjoy our life. I believe we should enjoy our life today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Then, if we're not racing, we don't have to contribute as much along the way. We don't have to sacrifice everything for the act of trying to get to the, to the retirement finish line quicker. When we do that, we can still contribute. We should still contribute. But we don't need to make that the top priority. We can prioritize things like giving, like travel, making memories. We can do those things. Then when we do that, we give ourselves the freedom and the permission to shift our careers when we have to. I had a season of life where I was contributing a really good amount to my investments. And then when I left that career to start doing what I'm doing now, we didn't contribute. We didn't have the weight to contribute. We had the freedom to just do the work that we're called to do. And I think there's something powerful in that. But eventually, eventually our health and our energy, it is going to deteriorate. We're not immortal. We're not invincible. At some point, it's going to catch up with us. And so I believe that we should be prepared because at some point, even me, I love work. I don't believe in retirement, but at some point I am going to have to slow down and eventually I won't be able to work. And I hope that's maybe in my eighties or nineties. I don't know, but we have to be prepared when the time comes. But if we give ourselves a longer runway, if I'm not racing for an age 50 retirement or a 55 retirement and I'm comfortable going longer I don't have to feel that weight on me every step of the way. And I, so I want to give you a real, a real example of this. Here's the example. I had a guy come to me and here's the scenario. And he said, Travis, I want to talk to you about investing. I know you talk about investing. I hear it on the podcast. And, and so I want your investing advice. And I said, okay, great. And, he's, and so he's 30 years old and here's the lay of the land. He has about 100,000 invested today at 30. So pretty good. He said that he wants to retire at 50. So he's 30 and he's running a race and he wants to be done at 50. And when he retires, he says that he wants a retirement income that's roughly like $100,000 today. And he said, you know, obviously I understand we have inflation, but about 100,000 today is kind of where I'm targeting. 
But there's a couple other factors I think are important here. Number one, he's in a very high paying job today that he despises. He hates this job. He hates it. He is miserable. It's sucking the life out of him. You can see it in his face. He's being kind of a jerk to his wife and he's traveling a lot. He's on the road every single week. Every single week he's on the road. And so he's missing out on a lot of his kid stuff. He's miserable. He hates it, but it pays a lot of money. And his question to me is this, how much do I have to save Travis so that I can retire at age 50 and what? Start enjoying my life. So I said, I can, I can help you with the math. And so we did the math. Here's what we found. From age 30 to age 50, and we're assuming 3% inflation, we're assuming the 4% rule concept, we're assuming a 9% return over a long period of time, he has to contribute $5,900 a month, every month, between age 30 and age 50. So all it takes is a simple $6,000 a month for the next 20 years. And I said, that, that's, that's one option. And I said, can I, can I give you a scenario? He was oddly comfortable with that. He's like, okay, okay. And I said, but can I give you some alternatives? And so I said, okay, let's, do, let's pretend that you do a more traditional age 60 retirement. So instead of going from 30 to 50, we go from 30 to 60. And here's the math. He would have to contribute 2,700 a month from 30 to 60. And he would have the same $100,000 annual income in, t- in today's dollars when he retires. Okay. So that's a much lower bar. That bar would allow him to travel with his family. It would allow him to, to do some other things and not put all of his discretionary income towards retirement. And then I said, but, but I have another idea. I said, pretend with me, pretend with me. That instead of having this job that you despise, what if you were to go find meaningful work? And what if you were to give yourself permission to continue working longer because not, not because you have to, but because you want to, because it adds value to your life and you don't have to have as high of a bar. And I said, so here's an option. Instead of retiring at 50 or 60, what if you plan for 70? And I said, I'm not advocating for this. I'm just showing you another option. And and we did the math. And if he were to contribute 1,100 a month, one-fifth of his, I want to retire at 50. If he were to contribute 1,100 a month, every month, at age 70, he would have the ability to have an income that equates to $100,000 a year in today's dollars. And I said, it allows you to pursue work that that matters to you, that has meaning, that fulfills you. You can invest more money into your family and travel and adventures and making memories. You don't have to travel every week. You can be present. You can have a better marriage. That was my sales pitch to him for option three. And here's where he came out. Option two is terrible. He said, I won't survive to 60. He said, I hate my job so much. I won't even survive to get to 60. So he threw that off the table real quick. And so he's weighing between, I got 20 more years of misery until I can actually enjoy my life. And that's investing about 6,000 a month. So he's going to focus almost solely on investing for 20 more years And then he finally gets to go enjoy his life. Mind you, his kids will be grown and gone by then. And then the other alternative is he can contribute $1,100 a month, find meaningful work, be more present, and enjoy his life from here all the way out. And he said, I'm going to go with option number one. And here's what he said, exact quote. I wrote it down. He said, 20 years doesn't sound so bad. It will go by fast. Sadly, I think he's right. It will almost certainly go by in the blink of an eye. 
And I feel bad for him for that. And obviously he's, he's a big boy. He gets to make his own decisions, but I think he deserves better. I think his family deserves better than to have him living a miserable work existence for two more decades so that he can go flip a switch at 50 and go live a life, a life of leisure. That's why I believe that meaningful work is the release valve to so much of this pressure. When we give ourselves permission to let our work, our good work, add value to our lives, we don't need to rush it. We don't need to race to the finish line. We can find meaning today, we can find meaning tomorrow, and we can find meaning down the road. So, yes, I want to enjoy my life, but I'm actually enjoying my life today. And I think, I think that's a good way to look at it. I don't think we should live in some level of tolerance or misery for decades, and then we get to flip a switch and enjoy our life. I believe life should have meaning always. And so that's the idea I wanted to put on the table today. You can feel free to agree or disagree, but I hope you'll think about it. Because I think we all deserve to live a life that's rich, not with money, not with wealth, but with meaning. That's all I have today. Take care, guys. 